Welcome to Hannity, and this is a Fox News alert. Tonight, radical Muslim cleric Anjum Chowdhury joins me in a Hannity exclusive, his first U.S. interview after being arrested in London on suspicion of supporting and encouraging terrorism. Now, that's moments away, but first, President Obama on terror charges in London. The controversial Muslim cleric has advocated for Britain to become an Islamic state and follow Sharia law. He is also suspected of radicalizing hundreds and is believed to have ties to ISIS, including links to the man who is suspected of beheading James Foley. Joining us now in his first interview, U.S. interview after being released from jail, is London Imam Anjum Chowdhury is with us. All right. Rather than argue, you've been on the show twice before, how about I ask you a question? I'll give you 20 seconds uninterrupted to answer. Is that fair? Okay. Okay. First question I have is, you refused to kill the beheading of innocent people. James Foley, the other individuals that were beheaded by ISIS. My question to you is very simple. Why would you hold innocent people responsible, regardless of what you think the reasoning is behind it, why would you hold them responsible for something they themselves did not do? Well, I think that the information that we receive, sadly, is um, uh, very biased. If you look at what the people are saying who are holding these hostages, they are willing to exchange them. They are talking about the fact that there's no stability and security in Muslim countries because of the U.S. and British foreign policy. So I think if you look at the whole picture, you will find, in fact, there's, a, there's another story. And until we hear that story, I'm afraid well, we, we cannot heard. make an One guy was an aid assessment. worker that went to Syria to help innocent children. I hardly think he was a guy that deserved to have his head chopped off because you believe in a caliphate. Well, you know, as I said, I don't take my, my news from Fox News or the BBC. If you look at the people on the ground, I think you'll find that they have a completely different, different story. The Christians and the Jews are living quite peacefully, in fact, in the Islamic State at the current time. Let me ask you this question. Um, would you desire yourself, would you ever want to join ISIS and fight with them, considering you think their cause is so noble? Well, you know, Sean, ISIS don't exist anymore, as you know. Uh, the Islamic State is made up of many organizations and bodies. In fact, millions of citizens are living there under the Sharia. Of course, I would love to live under the Sharia. I've said that to you before. I would love to bring up my children under the Sharia. And in fact, my passport was in fact taken on Friday, so obviously it makes it difficult for me to travel now. Do you believe that, that suicide bombers get 72 virgins in heaven if they kill innocent men, women, and children? You know, nobody will kill innocent men, women, and children. In the battlefield, as you know, people kill each other. I think it was We're your talking own about suicide bombers. Albright and Tommy Franks. Suicide well, bombers I'm, I'm that go into the open marketplaces you know, and blow themselves up, and there are people there that well, look, are non-political, they get killed. Do you believe when they go to heaven that Allah gives them yeah. 72 virgins? This is just not the reality. You know, if you look, for example, at the marketplaces which are bombed in Afghanistan and Pakistan, usually you find this black water, you know, some American company, the, IS, the uh, ISI of Pakistan, who are killing innocent people and then blaming the Taliban. There's nothing called suicide in Islam. There's something called using your body, sometimes in the battlefield, you know, against the enemy. You know, if you just uh, kill yourself because you're depressed, right. that is completely after prohibited. They but, kill you know, people, if someone, if someone, after, I know, but I'm asking a specific question. Do you yeah. believe after they kill people that they go into the arms of Allah and that Allah gives them 72 virgins? Well, you know, I believe that if someone sacrifices his life for the sake of Allah, you know, and he does something which is allowed Islamically, then obviously this man is shaheed. And, you know, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa promised much more than 72 virgins in the hereafter. He will have everything that he wants. I think that, you know, you underestimate what Allah can give you in the hereafter. Do you want to see a worldwide caliphate? In other words, do you want the entire world to uh, either convert to Islam or that they would be viewed as infidels and should be killed? No, that's not true, Sean. You know, the reality is that we've had the Sharia before, and now we have it again. The non-Muslims can live quite peacefully together with the Muslims, side by side, as you saw in Spain for over 800 years. They can pay the jizya, in return, their life and wealth will be protected. But they don't pay the zakat, by, by all accounts, which is much more. You know, they can have their own places of worship, and they can do their own rituals. You know, in many respects, and in fact, in all respects, it's much better than the system we have today in America and in Britain. Why are you on welfare? You get $25,000 a year, the equivalent of of welfare you know why don't you, you know, don't believe everything you read in Is the British media do you I do something in fact for a living I do something for a living I'm not on job seekers allowance do you, you know, get everybody welfare? in Britain gets uh, child benefit 
Do you get I welfare? Beg your pardon? Do you get any type of government assistance? You know, assistance? everybody gets stuff for their children, but it's irrelevant. You know, when, when, when was someone who received, let's say, for the sake of argument, welfare, not allowed to have his voice heard? Are we saying that everyone now who's on the poverty line in America shouldn't speak? You've got already four, over 40 percent of the people in America who are on the poverty line who need welfare benefits, so they you know, can't speak about the politics. I'm they can't speak to about you. foreign policy. And you make, you make, you, you dismiss that James Foley and these three other people that were beheaded on this brutal video. You, you deny that. That is terrorism, but yet you say people should be proud of the word terrorism, quote, proud to be called terrorists, uh, and that, quote, you urge followers to rise up. You talk about suicide bombers and you suggest that, well, you know, it's all part of this war. What is the war? What do you want? What is it that you, you seem to support ISIS, you seem to support terrorism, you seem to support, ask other people to raise up arms that you yourself have been uh, obviously unwilling to do. What is it that you're looking for? You know, Sean, uh, you mentioned many things. I don't think we have the time to discuss all of them. But, you know, I what believe that there are two camps in the world. I beg your pardon? Well, in other words, you want, you say you should be proud yeah. to be a terrorist. You should be proud to join ISIS. No, I never said that. You, I never you, said you that. never condemned I never the, said you that. Never come on, you come never, on, Sean. You know, you know very well, I've never said join ISIS. You said I you urged said your cronies to be, to be called terrorists. Proud, I'll tell you when you said it. Proud to be called terrorists, and you sneered on a trip abroad mm -hmm. funded by benefits when you when you took a recent you know, trip. You know, you know, Sean, if, if terrorism is standing up for Islam and saying that the people have a right to defend themselves, then obviously, you know, we're, we're quite happy to be labeled. Kind of an amazing piece in the New York Times the other day, an essay entitled, Was That Racist? Times reporter Greg Howard highlighted what he says is, is the systemic racism of white women on New York City sidewalks. Howard says when he's walking around the city, white women and only white women repeatedly fail to walk in a courteous manner, forcing him onto the street or the grass if he hopes to avoid a collision, and he's very upset about it. Jason Whitlock is an anchor at our sister network, Fox Sports 1, and he joins us tonight. Jason, thanks all for coming on. No problem. Glad to be here. Um, I, so I read this piece, and a couple thoughts went through my mind. One, I, I think it's a, it's a bad habit of mine to start generalizing about groups of people as if they're all the same or people of a certain appearance act like every other person looks like that person. So that kind of is racism, A. B, I thought this was almost a psychiatric statement when you start imagining that one class of people hates you who don't even know you on the sidewalk. What, what did you make of this piece? Listen, I, I want to be completely transparent. I know yeah. the writer a little bit. He's written about me. Hmm. I've interviewed him for a job. I also want to be transparent when I, what, what I say, uh, Tucker. I don't have a problem with interracial dating. I just want to put that on the record. I've done it. I don't have a problem with it. Okay. Black men like Greg Howard, who in his piece, he spells out that he's had this great affinity towards white women. They've been his sisters. They've been his mothers. They've been his lovers. They've been his best friends. He has an obsession with white women. And black men who have an obsession with white women and sometimes who date outside their race, they find as a defense mechanism for the criticism they take in the black community is to try to be publicly anti-white. They, they live a different life in private, and then publicly, and through social media, and through whatever their media jobs are, they try to act like they're the most militant, Malcolm X descendant that you can possibly be. What he's written is inf insincere, it's infantile, it's what you said, psychiatric. You have to wonder about his, his sanity, and his own identity. He is confused. If one of my employees wrote a piece like this about any group and said there's some racial group that hates me and each one of them is looking at me weird on the street, first of all, I would pull the piece because I think it's an attack on an entire group, which is not allowed. But second, I would say, you know, you need, you need to go talk to somebody. Why didn't his editors do that? Because it's the New York Times and they've devolved into an organization I had a lot of respect for. But now it's just a lot of race baiting. It's the using of confused young people. I think this young man's still under 30 years old. He's clearly got some issues as it related to race. Again, he loves the fruit of white America, the white woman, but he wants to hate the tree that produced it. And it's embarrassing. If this piece were edited, someone should have scrapped it. Someone should have pointed out, you perhaps need some help. It's a diary entry 
attached to the brand of the New York Times and present it as if it's something we should take seriously. It's just race baiting for the sake of race baiting. Listen, man, if a white woman had a problem with you on the sidewalk, if she were fearful of you, she would right. step out of your way to avoid you. She's oh, walking towards him. That's a good him, point, probably, actually, that I hadn't thought of. Yeah, he looks so harmless and so respectable that she just assumes, like most men who are chivalrous, he's going to step out of her way. She is not going to walk dead into him and risk a conflict if she had a problem with him. Again, it, it's like one of these, she can't huh. win either way. If she steps out of the way, it's like, oh, white women are afraid of me, and they step out of the way every time they see me. If she continues on her path and says, oh, this is a respectful guy who looks like someone I would be friends with, right. maybe she can smell the lust off of him and just thinks he's going to be a gentleman and step out of her way, because that's what most gentlemen do. Uh, that had never occurred to me. That's a very smart point. Jason Whitlock, thanks a lot for that. I appreciate it. Thank you, Tucker.